Namaskaram everyone welcome back to the 32nd episode of our master and dale series so in the last episode we created the bullets you were able to fire and now in this particular episode the bullet is going to break certain meshes we are going to use the unreal's chaos physics and what is called as fracture mode so i'll show you how you can decide how your mesh is going to break when it is going to be impacted by a certain force like from a bullet or from some other external force so if you haven't watched the previous episode i highly recommend you do that because the bullet part is already done and in this one we are going to discuss how we can create the force and how we can break the mesh so without wasting any time let's get started all right so we are in our editor now we are going to break this barrel so to set up how this barrel will break or for that matter any mesh you want to break so there is a mode called a fracture mode where you can define how the mesh is going to break when you are going to apply certain level of force on it so before we implement that let's implement this logic into our bullet so that when the bullet hits this mesh it's going to trigger a function that will apply the damage and then we will set up how this mesh gonna break so first let's locate our bullet this is what we created in the last episode so i told you that this box collider will allow us to detect whether this particular bullet has came in contact with anything so in the box we will scroll down and in the collision preset, we will set it to block all. That means anything that comes into contact, it will block it. That means it will hit. So when it hits, it will fire this event. So once this event is triggered, we will get the actor with whom the bullet has came in contact. So I'll get that actor and now I want to apply damage. So the damage feature differs in each category. If it's a barrel or a wooden object, then we have to break it. If it's a character or player, we have to minimize his health. And the other scenario could be a wall, ground or anything static. So if it comes in contact with such static meshes, we just want to make the bullet disappear because they are not damageable. They are just static objects. So to deal with this case, we are going to go in blueprints and we are going to create a folder and we are going to create BLIs. This means blueprint interfaces. So we'll create one blueprint interface. I will name it BLI, blueprint interface of damageable. So any blueprint or I must say any actor who implements this interface is considered as a damageable actor. Okay. So I'll double click on it. Now when someone implements this interface, we will provide it a function that has to be implemented by that actor. So what do I mean by that is I will call it apply damage and I will hit compile. So now if I go to my barrel in the third person and if I implement this interface by going in the class settings under the implemented interface and search for BLI damageable. Now you see it gives us this apply damage function. That means anyone who implements this particular interface will get this function or event and it has to be implemented so that when your bullet comes into the contact of any actor that has implemented this function, which is apply damage, then this will be called and then this wooden barrel will break. All right. So we'll double click on it. Now this event will be called here. But what if it is a wall or a ground? It is not damageable. So I will not implement this damageable interface. So in that case, this will fail silently without giving any errors. Okay. Now after the damage part is executed, I would like to destroy this bullet. So I'll use destroy actor and this will destroy this bullet actor. Let's hit compile. Go back to wooden barrel. First, let's replace the root scene. And now we want it to break. So for now, we will just say destroy actor. That means as soon as the bullet hits the barrel, it will get destroyed. Okay, now we can remove this event begin play waiting and destroying because now we are going to break it manually. So we don't want it to auto destroy. So this logic that we made in the inventory series, we will remove it. And if I play now, barrel is there. I can shoot. You see it disappears. And if I shoot on something that does not implement this, for example, my character, you can see the bullet is getting destroyed immediately. So I can go back and now it's time we set up how to break this mesh. So select this, go in window and here call place actors. 
in this change to fracture mode and here you will be able to create how this is going to break so there are a bunch of ways you can break this which is called fracture see to break any mesh we need to play with its geometry or i must say the coordinates that are involved when you build this in a 3d software so you have all the vertices faces and edges so we are going to create a new geometry collection and i'm going to name it geometry collection b wooden barrel and i will keep it inside the barrels under the items and i will create okay so now you can see it has turned out into a transparent color that means right now you haven't added any breaking areas or i must say any fractures so i'll click on this uniform so this is how the mesh is going to break into pieces okay and now i'm going to fracture it so when you will hit for the first time it is going to be broken in let's say 10 or 20 pieces i'll click outside and now you can see you are able to see the colors of the pieces the way it is going to break okay if i come out of this fracture mode go in the selection mode and select this wooden barrel geometry collection component you will see if you scroll down and search for threshold so inside this chaos physics you will see thresholds so you have to apply at least like five lag units of force to break it for the first time then if you try to break the pieces again then you will require less force and then in the third attempt if you again try to break the broken piece it's going to take much less force that is 5000 so this is how the thresholds are defined don't worry we will experiment and you will get it so first we need to create a force that can break this mesh so in my bullet blueprint where we are executing the apply damage i am going to create a force field so i'll right click spawn actor from class and this is something available inside unreal so we will get the actor location that the bullet hit so get the actor transform and we will split this transform of this field and i'll split this one connect location and rotation and now we do not want to plug the scale because even if the mesh is too big we don't care we will keep our limit and before i set the value let's select the class that is master field okay if you press on this browse you can see this is how the fields look like so this is the level of impact that we will create and you can reduce the scale as well so we will set it to 2 again and we can go back to our bullet and we can change it to like something 0 0.6 instead of writing it three times what you can do is multiply change this second pin to float single precision and call it 0 0.6 and this one to 1 1 1 okay now you can change this value and this will be the scale so this is the scale of this field 0 0.6 in all three directions now this field is spawned it haven't created that force or impact so before creating the impact we will store it so we will promote it to variable and name it chaos field okay and now we are going to set its radial magnitude of let's say 100 okay and we are also going to set its lifespan that means once the impact is created how long do we want this field to be there so we'll double click here and we will call set field lifespan and i'll connect this here and let's keep it 0.1 or 0.2 whatever you like and we can break these two pins and use this variable instead okay i have beautified things a bit so we will set the magnitude we will set its lifespan now we need to trigger it but to trigger it we have to set its activation type as well so set activation type to trigger and now we need to trigger this so to trigger we will again use this and we will call ce trigger so this will trigger the impact or force and now once this is done we would like to destroy the bullet if i compile and play press one and shoot you can see it broke but if you set its scale to let's say 0 0.5 or let's say 0 0.25 which is very less 
and if I press one again and shoot nothing breaks because it is not sufficient so I'll change it to 0.6 or you can change it to 0.78 press one and shoot you can see it broke all right awesome so this is good now we can go back to a third person but you saw there were a lot of pieces more number of pieces more it's going to be computationally expensive so to first let's understand how do we minimize the number of pieces what you are going to do select this actor in the geometry collection component if due to some reason you are not seeing this or something is missing just go to selection mode select this wooden barrel then select this geometry collection component go to fracture mode and back so you will be able to select the pieces good select this again and press on reset and this will reset the pieces so now it's no longer break because there is nothing so first we are going to select this mesh now you see it is ready to be fractured so i'll select this uniform fracture you can select anything you want and you will see something called as uniform Voronoi. so this is the number of sides so this is what allows you to tell the number of pieces so i'll set it to very small like one and two that means minimum one maximum two if I fracture, you will see there are 21 pieces. If I play and break it, if you count, they are almost like 21. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 4, 5 smaller pieces. So the idea is this number of bones tells you the number of pieces. You can again select this geometry collection component, reset, and this will remove all the fractures that you made. Now you can try something else, for example, cluster. If you select and the cluster fracture, you can see minimum maximum number of clusters. You can also specify the sites. If I fracture it, you can see there are total 143 pieces. We don't want that much. Instead, what we can do, we can reduce this minimum and maximum to one and two. And now if I fracture, you can see it turns into 68. You can again reset or you can press undo control Z and you also reduce this maximum side clusters select this fracture again you see it is now 32 so I'll set everything to 2 and I'll fracture you can see 22 pieces are there in total and now if I play press 1 and shoot you can see it broke in some different style so you can play with these now let's understand how to break one step ahead so let's select this full ply and I will fracture it again only this not the entire mesh and after fracturing you can see it can be broken into two more pieces you can see it created these two pieces you can see there are two pieces you can select this again go for planar and you can also shift where you want to break so you can do this and fracture now if you see there are three pieces one two and three play again press one and shoot you can see the ply is broken into three pieces now you can select the zeroth layer this will select all the pieces because all the pieces are listed under this now you can press on auto and this will automatically group pieces of a fractured mesh into the specified number of clusters that you will provide here and if i go to my bullet and reduce the impact and if i try let's say radial magnitude of 10 and I can also reduce the scale to 0.6 and I can go to third person map and this time I'll select this particular part or let's try radial this time and fracture it and play again press one and shoot at the top and if you shoot it again you can see you are able to break the pieces but you cannot break it any further because there is a level you can break this part that is represented by this two into these pieces but once you break it into these pieces you cannot break these pieces further so if you want to break pieces further it can be broken by your force field or if it didn't break due to some reason because it didn't reach at that area then you can shoot again to break it but remember once it is broken and if you shoot again then it cannot be broken down into further pieces because you haven't created the fracture for these pieces all right so this is how you fracture things and remember this is the vernoy sites where you can control the number of pieces cool but we do not want to see these colors we want to see the actual object color so i'll go and select this geometry collection component 
and I will search for color. Disable this show bone colors and you will be able to see the mesh. Now we have to go into the apply damage of this barrel. So I'll go to my third person blueprints spawners and this is my barrel and instead of this static mesh we will add the geometry collection that we created. So I'll go to my items barrels and this is my geometry collection. I'll drag it here and I'll replace it and I'll delete this SM barrel. Okay, so we have our mesh now. I can compile and we can go to our third person map. We can delete these two. We can go back to selection mode and hide this place actors. I'll just go and place it here. I'll go place it here. And now if I play, press one, shoot, shoot. Now why is it disappearing is because we are immediately calling the destroy actor. So we do not want to call the destroy actor. We would like to call set lifespan. That means this actor will get auto destroyed after one second. So if I play now, press one and shoot, it breaks and it disappears. You can increase it by let's say three, press one, shoot, shoot. Okay. And they disappear. Okay. If I play, press one and go near to this and shoot it. You see, it is colliding with me. So to avoid this issue, you can select this barrel mesh and you can click on this spawn ignore. That means, so any actor that is of class spawn will be ignored, which basically means your players or characters. So if you compile now, it will be ignored and you will not see the collision issue when you step on it. So I'll pick my gun, shoot, and you can see I can step on it. And the last part is that we have to spawn the loot. So we will put it here and we need to go in the third person map and we need to provide what do we want to spawn. So the default item should be, let's say handgun ammo, stack count 10. And in this one, we want a shotgun. And now if I play, press one and shoot, you can see I found the handgun ammo and the shotgun. If I press E, I can take the shotgun. If I collect this, you can see the handgun ammo has a 10 bullets. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope this gives you a clear understanding of how you can use fracture mode to create different types of variations of how your mesh can break. And in the next episode, we are going to start our interaction system. So since you have completed the breaking and shooting and aiming in the last three episodes, now it's time we build our interaction system so that you can interact with your environment. So stay tuned, like the video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, join the Discord community. If you have any doubts or questions or feedback, please feel free to post it in the YouTube comments. And if you need one-to-one -one interaction, feel free to join Discord channel. All the project files are available over there. So I'll see you in the next episode. Stay tuned. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.